Hail, thou favored one, the Lord is with thee. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. Good afternoon and welcome to St. John's, both those here in the church and all those watching us online to the celebration of Evensong and Holy Eucharist. Just a few announcements. Um, this is now another time of changes. Somebody counted and said that in the last two years there have been over 60 changes to the guidelines when it comes to services. So we are implementing yet again another set of guidelines. And so we're starting today, and I think the first and foremost most important thing is, is that the choir is back in full, which is wonderful, and it's glad, great to have them back. Also, we are having a very special guest preacher today. Izzy is here, Izzy Armstrong Holmes, who I don't want to define you by your husband, but uh, um, Stephen is sitting right there, and he was Rosie's predecessor, for those of you who don't know. We have also going to start today um, doing communion slightly different, which will then expand. We've added a little drop of wine to the wafers. And so in that way, we're still keeping hygienic guidelines, and yet you get communion in both kinds. Next week, we will be starting to do communion at the communion rail. For today, just stay seated. We will still be coming to you. If next week you think you still want to stay in the pews, we'll still come to you. Just let us know before the service. And then on the 29th, we are going to a new service schedule. Um, we'll be having Holy Eucharist at 8 a.m., Matins at 9.30, Holy Eucharist at 10.30, and then even song at 6 p.m. And if you are familiar with that particular schedule, yes, of course, that is the pre-pandemic schedule. However, having said this, there is a little bit of energy around this time at 3 o'clock. We're thinking about maybe doing something more informal at that time. So if you're interested in brainstorming what we could do at 3 o'clock, give the office a shout or send us an email and we'll be happy to entertain some ideas and see how that all develops. If you have any questions, call us. Um, we'll be happy to put all this in writing for you. Just let us know either as you leave the church or as we, as we communicate um, through email. Thank you for being here today, and now let us open our service as we sing our opening hymn, Not Far Beyond the Sea Nor High, Above the Heavens, But Very Nigh, Your Voice, O God, is hard. Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of Almighty God, 
Let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins so that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. We confess to God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed through our own grievous fault. Wherefore we pray God to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins and deliver us from evil. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lo, we heard of the same at Ephrata. The appointed psalm is a portion of Psalm 132, alluding to Mary as bearing the Christ child, the new ark of the New Testament. A reading from Luke. And Mary said,
A reading from Revelation. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings, and an earthquake and great hail. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten thorns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and it cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. The word of the Lord.
Today is the feast of Mary, Mother of God. It's when we think about Mary's death and entry into heaven, also known as the Assumption. We remember that Mary's body was taken up into heaven, not just her soul. She's one of a very few humans to have bodily ascended into heaven, others being Jesus and Elijah. As with most of Mary's feast days, today is a time to remember that this remarkable character was a normal human woman with a human body like ours. In the gardens just outside the church is a sculpture of that body made from twisted willow. Mary holds the infant Christ up high in her arms. And perhaps the most striking thing about the sculpture is that where Mary's breast and breasts and womb should be, there are empty spaces. It disturbs many people, and I put a picture of it on Facebook recently, and the response was very negative. I used to find it quite disturbing myself when it was up on the balcony peering down at us. However, since becoming a mother, my understanding of the artwork has changed completely, and it's influenced how I think about Mary and the Assumption, and that's what I want to share today. But before I go on, I want to make one point. Um, I'm responding to the artwork in a very personal way as a woman who has carried and birthed and breastfed a child. Um, I'm aware that these are topics that can be very difficult and painful for people. So I by no means think that this is the only way to be a mother or that mine is the only type of birthing body. I'm sharing this very personal response to the sculpture because it tells us something about Mary who also carried and birthed and presumably breastfed a child. So with that said, in the sculpture, Mary holds her child. She's clearly represented as a mother. Yet, the key anatomical features of motherhood, the breasts and the womb, appear to be missing. In fact, they're not just missing, they're deliberately represented as empty spaces, as cut out holes. This, it seems, is what most disturbs people. Why are they missing? Why did the artist do that? I saw the sculpture again recently when my daughter Bess and I had a pic picnic in the gardens here. Bess was pottering about in front of the sculpture and I thought how lovely it was. And then I looked at it for a while and I began to think it was a lot more than lovely. It was a powerful and quite moving way to depict Mary. And then I suddenly realised that it was the same sculpture that used to be here in the church, the same one that gave me the creeps and that I really wanted Marcus to get rid of. It was the same sculpture, but it looked completely different to me, and I've been trying to work out why. The difference I've realised is that since becoming a mother, I don't look at the womb and the breasts that are missing from this sculpture and see empty space. I see positive space, space that's full of something, that's there for a reason. I see space for creation and shelter and life. Post-birth, I'm very aware of my womb as a space in my body. Not in the sense that it's empty, now that Beth, my daughter, is out in the world, but that it's there, occupying space. It created and sheltered Beth. My womb has become both more real and more mysterious to me. More real because it's more connected with the world, because the thing it made is out in the world for me to see. But also more mysterious, because it's now the main part of my understanding of the great mysteries of life and death. And all of that is what I now see in that space in Mary's abdomen in the sculpture. And like the womb, I now also see breasts as a space of creation and shelter because of the experience of breastfeeding. Breast milk is a living tissue like blood. It changes with every feed to give the infant what they need at that moment. It contains antibodies and immune cells and stem cells and horm hormones that reduce stress and aid sleep and proteins with pain relieving properties, I could go on and on. But the point is that breast milk is a living, created thing, and that the breasts, like the womb, are an active, living, creating space. And again, that's what I now see in the sculpture. Those empty holes that once disturbed me in the sculpture are spaces that have made life, they've given, but they also receive. During breastfeeding, the mother receives information from her baby via her breasts. It's how the mother's body learns about the baby's health and adapts the milk accordingly. The womb is also a space that receives. The placenta is a two-way door. It passes nutrients to the baby, but it also cleanses the baby's bloodstream. 
And cells can also migrate through the placenta in both directions and can remain with the other person for decades after birth. So the physical separation between mother and child is not absolute. All of this giving and receiving is the daily activity of pregnancy, birth and breastfeeding and it leaves marks on a woman's body internally and externally. We're used to hearing about stretch marks, for example. But most of the other marks and changes, the many others, are hidden. At least, they're hidden to the outside world. To the mother, in my experience, they're always present. The rest of your life is lived in a body that is different. People are beginning to give this a name. It's called matrescence, like adolescence, but that's a whole other topic. So to get back to Mary, all of this is what I now see in that sculpture outside. In those empty spaces, I see the reality of my body as a mother. But far more significantly, I see the reality of Mary's body, that most important of all mothers. Hers was the body of a woman who had carried and birthed and presumably breastfed a child, a body forever changed by motherhood. And that was a state she chose with her powerful yes at the Annunciation, the Magnificat that we heard just now. This may seem like an obvious thing to say, that Mary had the body of a mother, but it does matter. This was the body that accompanied Christ through his formative years, the childhood that we know so little about. This was the body that stood at the foot of the cross. This was the body laid down in death and then wholly assumed into heaven. This mother's body is in heaven, sitting at the right hand of Christ and crowned as queen of heaven. There's a human body in heaven with Christ, a body marked and changed by that seemingly everyday state of motherhood, a body very much like mine.
Let us proclaim our faith in the God who encountered Mary and changed her body to motherhood, the motherhood of God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Give them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. I invite your prayers and thanksgivings at this time. And as we pray, please remember before God the people of Afghanistan, the people of Plymouth, all those suffering from COVID around the world, the church throughout the world. Pray for ourselves that we may become like Mary, home to the incarnate word in our hearts and minds and souls. Please offer your own intercessions in the silence of your hearts.
Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised to your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us exchange a sign of peace. be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, in our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, because thou didst give Jesus Christ, thine only Son, to be born for us who by the mighty power of the Holy Ghost was made very man of the substance of the Virgin Mary, of the power of the Holy Ghost, of the Virgin Mary, his mother, that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become thy children. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
All glory and thanksgiving be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father. For that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. Who by his own oblation of himself once offered, made a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, According to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we, thine unworthy servants, beseech thee, most merciful Father, to hear us, and to send thy Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that being blessed and hallowed by his life-giving power, they may become the body and blood of thy most dearly beloved Son, to the end that all who shall receive the same may be sanctified both in body and soul and preserved unto everlasting life. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we humbly offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, beseeching thee that all we who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech you to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen.
O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, Lord our God, thou Saviour of the world, through whom we have celebrated these holy mysteries, receive our humble thanksgiving, and of thy great mercy vouchsafe to sanctify us evermore in body and soul, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. At the end of the service, we'll be reciting the Angelus together, and some of you will have a Hail Mary between the pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be worthy of promises of Christ, and the final collect. There is no Hail Mary there. I got a bit carried away, I guess. There are three in a row, and then after that we may be worthy of the promises of Christ, we go right into the let us pray. Apologies for that. And now live without fear. Your creator has made you holy, has always accepted you, and loves you like a good mother. Go in peace to follow the good road and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost be with you and remain with you always. Amen. declared unto Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, 
Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. We beseech thee, O Lord, pour thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought unto the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 